Well, what did you think? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Pal to Tech Show number five. This is Friday, April 12th. How's everybody doing? I hope well. Okay, do we have a graphic? Can I at least get my opener graphic around here? Three, two, one, here. There it is. I hope you're all doing well. So we got a great show tonight for you. And those who have joined, where are we here? On the audience statistics. I don't know. I don't even know how many people we have on here. I think 50, something like that. Welcome one and all. It is great to see you. It is great to be back. I was away at, as you saw, Area 51, Las Vegas. I went out into the desert, did a family vacation. It was so awesome. I had a lot of fun. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about a change that has washed over me with regard to photography. And I'd like to talk about firmware updates as well as upcoming videos and things like that. So let's start with a, just a brief recap of the trip. Yeah, we did go to Area 51, somewhere I've always wanted to go. I mean, obviously you're not gonna get past that gate, you know? And it's such a weird place. I mean, you're out in the desert and you're driving and you're just going along this dirt road and there's nothing there. I mean, it's not even a paved road. It's not marked, it's just this, you wouldn't even know it's there, right? And you're driving along and you're driving along and there's obviously, at some point there's the there's weird little like gift shops and alien looking things and all that but area 51 itself you know the base the secret government base that was denied existence for years that has no real entrance <laughs> so you're driving along this dirt road and there's just these cows wandering around and you think you're lost and then suddenly the road gets a little nicer in terms of paved it starts to get paved a little bit and there's no more cows standing along the side. And you're driving for a little while and you're just looking and there's just nothing. I mean, it's just flat desert. And then just out of nowhere comes the guard shack, right? And the funny thing about it was the gate was open. I mean, you could literally drive through, except there's this kind of little sign that very subtly says, you know, we authorize lethal force, you know, that kind of, and then the sign that I, I don't like, the one that says no photography. There was that one as well. Now, Area 51, okay, Area 51, I understand why they would have a sign that says no photography. I, I get that. Uh-oh, you know what, and I need a rant alert. I need a rant alert graphic, so I don't have one yet, but I will get one. So other places, though, that I went in that area, in Vegas, there's a little bit of mirrorless or full frame camera discrimination going on, okay? Because there's like the Neon Museum, I think it was, and, and there's just a number of places where you can bring, you know, your phone, okay? Bring this thing in, and they don't care. You could have 4K video, they don't care. They see you, they see you with this thing. Mm-mm, you have to pay, you know, a $50 professional photography fee. And it was, I, I hadn't sensed it so much of, you know, you're carrying a tripod, you're carrying this, and there's a number of places where you're either paying a lot more money to do that, or you can't do it at all. But you can just, oh, sorry, you can just do this, right? And I mean, I don't know, it, rant over, let's get back to the, <laughs> let's get back to the story. So I walked up to the gate and they have these cameras all around. I mean, you're not, nobody's getting in there. And I had no intention. By the way, if you're from Area 51 and you're watching this, I had no intention, okay, of that day of going into the place, but I wanted to just see that it even exists. And what's funny is they have these cameras and I noticed that as I got out of the car, my family got out of the car, we kind of walked around a little, the, the cameras were going, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they were following, right? So you could do this shuffle and the cameras are going to be... So I know that there is somebody somewhere in some government installation, right? And they're looking at a monitor and they've got a little joystick, you know, who the hell is this guy? And they're, they're moving it around. And you know that within the first three minutes of being there that they've captured the license plate of the car, right? Oh, the car's a rental. And then they pull that up 
and then they pull up the prism system or whatever, whatever it is they use, and they can see, oh yeah, that's the Palda Tech channel, right? And so welcome Area 51 employees. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for your hospitality. Um, and yeah, it was a great trip. And the idea of the trip was to get away with the family, but also to get out and take some photos. Which leads me to my next topic. Um, but before I do, let me check in with the audience. Hello, everyone who's here. Who's here tonight? Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's been quite the week. We have Mr. Jarble. Great to see you. Thank you, Mr. Jarble. I really appreciate the super chat. That will help pay for the Area 51 jaunt that we just did. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I I hear you, man. I mean, I have been struggling to do anything but work these days. It's been crazy busy this past week. And I f was right in the... You know what? I'll talk about that when I give you an update on the channel, but it relates to work. But there's something happening on Monday that blew up everything for me. And I'll get to that in a second. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Who do we have? Who do we have here? We've got Miles. Good to see you, pal. How you doing? I hope LA. You got some good weather out there. My goal, by the way, by the time I get, if I if I get to a million subscribers, is to know where everybody lives. So I can go, hey, Tom, that's great. How's South Wichita? Or, oh, wonderful, Julie. Are you, are you getting much snow up in northern Finland? <laughs> right? That would be so cool. Okay, Mohammed, good to see you. Turkey, Paul, nice to see you, pal. Your photos are great as always. I thought I saw Natalie here somewhere. Natalie, hi. Oh, evening, Natalie. Good to see you. Dimitri. Oh, this is great. Christopher Wu, good to see you. Petra, hello, hello from Austria. We got Ontario in the house. Kenneth, good to see you, pal. And Fred from, is that Kentucky? Okay, good. I got to learn my state abbreviations. Uh, Slovakia, Jim, good to see you, Jim. I'm so glad. And I love all the participation you're doing on the Discord server, man. It's great to see you there as well. So, okay, next topic. Uh, we got to keep kind of a tight time schedule because I don't have a lot of time for this live stream. But um, there was one other thing I did in Las Vegas. I just wanted to share because it brings out my absolute favorite aspect of photography that there is. And that would be the way that photography captures in a, in a sense that nothing else can. And I think in some ways, not even video, the passage of time. And Las Vegas was the very kind of first trip slash date that I had with my wife, right? Before we got married, three years before we got married. In 1996, we went there and we took a helicopter ride down the strip, you know? And it's funny because at the time, you go back to that time and that place, you know, my biggest concern, <laughs> right, was, oh, what club or bar or where are we going to go gambling after this? Or, oh, she looks really good in that, you know, that kind of thing. And we went again, only we brought our two teenage children with us. So, and yeah, and, and it's just, it's different, you know, it's so different. So here we are, 1996 to 2001. Have a look at that. Uh, well, that went by fast. Hold on. I might pause that. There's the helicopter that went by so fast. Let me see if I can pause this thing. Um, okay. So no, I can't pause it, but you know what? I can back it up. There we go. So look at that. Okay. That, if that's not time passages, I don't know what is, <laughs> right? And you know, it's funny. She looks so much better. Like, like her face is, is nice and, and, you know, thinned out and my, and look at me. <laughs> Right, I had brr. so you know it's it is what it is, but it was it was a great trip, and yeah, our biggest concern the second time we did it was you know which teenage kid was going to get the which seat. There was a little bit of a, a problem getting on the helicopter, right? As you know, so it was a great trip. Now let's move on to the next subject, which is <laughs> firmware updates for Fujifilm, and I this is one near and dear to my heart and I normally make a video and I don't always make videos with firmware updates. Like if they come out with a firmware update, you know, that it, the only thing about it is say it's one camera and it's just, you know, bug fixes. I'm not going to do a, a video on that. However, the firmware update that they just did, and that would be for the XH2S, the GFX, the GFX 102, and one of those little battery grip things looks like this, if you don't know what I'm talking about. The FTXH, but don't quote me on that. 
Those were the only three cameras slash devices that were part of this firmware update. So that was a no brainer. I mean, I probably wouldn't have done a video on that, but this was a significant update in terms of autofocus. And so I just want to show you the update. And then I want to talk about something that I think is going to happen with regard to that. So let's get to, uh, obviously, um, if you have one of those cameras and so forth, you can go to the firmware update page, but, and it's right here. Like, let's just pick this one, you know, the GFX 102. And what's funny is like, if you look at the details of it, this one, you know, it's, it's not quite. I mean, do I have the right one? Wait, two point. Oh, hold on a second. That's it. Yeah, no, but yeah, this one right here, GFX one hundred two. Yeah. All right. So you get a little bit of tracking start speed speed up, which is good. And there's another issue that with the, I guess it's the AF focusing accuracy. That it's more. I think the distance indicator was screwy. So they. They fix that up and they've included that you're using the, the wide angle lens. But the other thing about it, and I've heard a lot of complaints about this recently is Wi-Fi connection in problems, number of complaints about it being slow. And, you know, the funny thing about that is with regard to speed. OK, if you look at speed with Wi-Fi, you really need to set your Fujifilm camera to be using 5G. OK. And I have a whole video on that. It was, I think the last video I did or the second to last video that I did recently, if you don't know or haven't seen it, please go check it out. It's astounding how much faster you can connect to the Fujifilm app if you set your camera to be using 5G. And it's very simple to do, okay? Can everyone use 5G? No, because it's, it's a newer technology. But I would be drop dead on the floor shocked if anyone watching this video had a smartphone that couldn't support 5G these days. Why didn't Fujifilm just have it set that way to begin with? Well, I think because the 2.5 spec is more universal, it's older, it's more tested, and it has a longer range than 5G. But if you think about it, the range doesn't matter. So if you're walking around taking photos with your Fujifilm camera and you're transferring those photos and geotagging them to your phone, you're not going to leave your phone, say, in your car, right? Your camera is most likely going to be on, you know, you're going to be holding it. Your phone is going to be in your pocket. It's a close distance. So turn it on 5G and you will be happier for sure. No, no question about it. Um, and then, you know, you have this other firmware update and it's for the X-H2S. So let me go to that one. Here it is. So on the X-H2S, um, where is it? Here it is. Quite a few on the X-H2S and they've got some app updates, but this one right here is what I wanted to show you. Autofocus performance improved. Autofocus performance proved. Those are words you want to hear in a firmware update. So would I, and by the way, if you have those cameras, go ahead and get the update. I haven't heard any problems with those updates at all. So I would get them if I had, I don't have those cameras, which is one reason why I didn't do the video, but here's the thing about it. And this is what I wanted to focus on. If you look in past, you know, the greatest predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So you look at Fujifilm and you look at their firmware update practices in the past. Let's have a show of hands. Okay. Right now, how many of you think that the firmware update to improve video autofocus tracking, to improve, say, stills autofocus a bit. And some of these other ones are going to be coming to the X-T5, perhaps even maybe the XS20. Uh, how, how many of you think that's going to happen? Let me take a look. I'm curious what you think. Because I do. I do. Everybody's just saying hello to each other. I don't even know if I'm on the right. Are we caught up to the clip here? <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm glad everyone's so social, but <laughs> did anybody hear what I said? <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Wait, Miles. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. He's talking about the, the issue that I was ranting about. Somebody jump in and answer that question so I, so I know I'm still live. <laughs> Everybody's just waving to each other. You know what? I'm going to leave. You all can socialize. I think this is great. I've brought the world together. <laughs> Brian, I'm glad you made it to the chat. Welcome. Okay. All right. I'm just going to assume you're watching. So I think these updates are coming to the X-T5. I think they're coming to the other cameras very soon. That's my gut feeling. I have no confirmation on that. Fuji has not discussed this with me. I don't have any inside information. I go to Fuji rumors just like the rest of the world. So I, I don't know, but that's what I think is happening. And I got to tell you, if that's true, I will make a video on that one. You can be sure. Um, I think that Fuji really, if there's one thing Fujifilm could do, and that is focus more on their firmware updates. It's a way of touching. It's like it's like doing a live stream. Fuji, it's like doing a live stream, okay? Live streams, they, they're just stressful as hell. I prepare all day for them. I get nervous. Right before I go on, I, you know, I don't, rah, I, I get, it's, it's not like easy for me, okay? And, but it's a way to connect with the audience in that the videos can't do. And so your, your firmware updates, your firmware updates are a way to connect to your users in a way that just releasing a new camera model can't do because maybe they're not going to get the new camera model. But if they're holding on to an older model and you even if you make something that's not, say, autofocus related, but you make something that's like a little bit easier in the menu or something you know, kind of cool, it's still a way of connecting. And, and I think you need to do that. So I hope that these firmware updates come to the other cameras and I think they might. So. I don't know, but what do you think? Is any, am I even caught up on this stream? <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Thank you, Natalie. Natalie's talking about it. Raymond's talking about it. Andrew is. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so Andrew, that's another thing. Andrew's saying he's a little disappointed about the autofocus for subject detection. And I think that is an area for improvement, particularly with the 40 megapixel sensor. And when I tested out the GFX 106, obviously it was a big improvement with autofocus. But when I went back to the X-T5, you know, I like the X-T5 better. It's just more me, this camera, but definitely could be improved. I honestly, I don't use subject detection a whole lot. The only kind of AI or processing for autofocus that I use is Face Eye Auto Detect, which I think works very well. Could it be improved? Yes, it could. But that's, I don't, you, you know, I don't go, oh, there's an airplane. Wait, I got to get it on airplane. I, I just don't do that. I, I talk about how to do that, but I don't do it myself. So, but I agree with you there. Okay. So wait a minute. Hold on a second. We got somebody saying right here, it is already confirmed by Fuji. Now you got to be careful saying that. All right. Um, fifth gen to all fifth gen cameras. How is it confirmed by Fuji? Because if that's true, I need, I got to start preparing the video. I mean, this could be information that could help the pal. You got to help out your uncle pal to tech here, please. If that's really true, please email me. Even if you got the information, let's just say, let's say somebody fell asleep on to you next, you know, in, in a bus in the seat behind you, they fell asleep and they mumbled it in REM state of sleep and they weren't supposed to, and you happen to hear it. Email me, let me know because I won't mention it, but it really helps to know when planning these videos, okay? All right, so that, that leaves me to my next subject, which I'm not doing another video until two things happen, <laughs> okay? So here's what happened. I got back from Area 51. I love saying that. I got back from Area 51 and I jumped right into how to clean your camera's sensor wanted to make a video on primarily on the X-T5, but I also wanted to cover cameras like the GFX and the X-H and also the, the X-100 and, or, and IBIS mainly, focus on IBIS because I get a lot of questions, you know? Well, what do you do if the sensor, if the sensor has, um, what do you do if the sensor is kind of on an IBIS unit? How do you clean it, right? So, there's ways of doing it that will protect your camera. And I absolutely want to go over this because first of all, I don't want you wrecking your sensors. And two, 
it's not that hard to do, folks. And I told my backstage members this, and I want to reiterate it now for all channel members. When I teach how to use Fujifilm cameras, heck, when I teach anything, it's not the information that I'm giving that's that important to me. I, I mean, I'm kind of embarrassed to say it, but it's okay if I'm wrong once or twice about a couple of things. I know that that just seems horrible to hear that, but I don't care about that as much. What I'm more concerned about when I teach, for example, how to clean a sensor, is making sure that you have the confidence to do it, to build up your confidence to do it. And once your confidence comes up, then it's a matter of following directions, okay? So that's how I want to approach it. So I started making the video, I started writing the script, and then I thought, you know what? I don't wanna just show how to do it using one type of sensor cleaning kit. So I purchased three different types, and one of them from shipping was delayed by a day, and so it didn't arrive on time, so I had to wait a day. So finally, when I sat down to write the script and start doing production, okay, once I started doing that, there's something wrong with the human brain. I mean, really, when you look at computers and programming and AI and algorithms and logic, the human brain is, I don't, even, I don't know if they're doing it to us on purpose or if the human brain is just fundamentally flawed. But have you ever noticed that something will pop into your head that's important for you to remember? The problem is it pops into your head at a time that you can't do anything about it at the worst possible time, right? So I had a thought a couple of days ago that popped into my head and had that thought popped into my head a week prior, it would have been great. I would have had a, a relaxing week. <laughs> Didn't happen that way. It popped into my head at the worst possible time as I'm sitting down here just about ready to do the video. And that thought, oh, it was awful. It's one of the worst thoughts that a U.S. citizen can have. <laughs> and that was, guess what? Monday is tax day. Taxes are due. And I haven't even started them. I totally forgot about it. I just, I completely forgot about it, right? I don't have an accountant. I do it all myself. I get out a, you know, a protractor and a compass and an abacus and I just do it myself, right? So I thought about it. Oh, geez, I hope the IRS isn't watching this video. So I, I do the taxes myself. The problem is it takes a couple of days. I got to sit down. It's a whole thing. So I started to panic, right? Because I'm going to be out of town tomorrow and Sunday. I'm busy. I've got this other trip, which it, I can't talk about it right now, but it's it's something that's really cool, kind of related to the channel. So I'm going to be gone. So it was today. And I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. I got to do the live stream today, which means I got to prepare for the live stream. Therefore, blah, 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 blah. I backed it all up. And I thought, all right, you know what? I'll do the sensor cleaning video next week. So that's why there was no video today. And so that's one reason why. The second reason why I didn't do video, and this one's a little more important, and it's a reason why I am not going to do any more videos for this channel until I finish this task, okay? And that is that I respond to every single message that I've received. Um, I mean that. I mean that. They're, they're backed up. Now, I'm not talking about messages from, you know, some vendor from three months ago. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about from channel members who either wrote in to say something nice or maybe not so nice. They made a suggestion that's, that's helpful or they might be, you know, sponsors, whatever. Um, I want to respond and particularly to the backstage folks who support the channel more than anyone. I've really dropped the ball on that. I mean, guilty as charged. It really makes me feel lousy and I don't like that. And, and, and so I'm not doing another video until I'm done. I can get it done in about six or seven hours, but I just have to do it. So that will be done this weekend. Sensor cleaning video will be next week. I also have, when we're talking about video production, there's going to be a new video for you on the X106. I've already shot it. I just have to edit it. So that's coming. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's channel channel updates for you. Crazy stuff. Um, I would rather have a root canal. In fact, I would rather have four root canals than, than do my taxes, to be honest with you. And I'm sorry if there's anyone out there that loves doing it. It's just, it's not my thing. Um, the other thing, you know, that I want to reiterate here, and it comes back to photography. 
<laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of stuff that's gonna make me like not sleep well. Right? I'm not gonna sleep. Now I'm stressed. Right? Because they are, they're coming for me. They're coming for me. Um <laughs> right, Paul. Yeah, I gotta tell you something. One of the funniest YouTube videos I've ever seen for Fujifilm, and I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if Ken is watching now or not. Um, I'm trying to kill time because I can't figure out how to take this thing off the screen. Oh, there it goes. Okay. One of the funniest videos I've ever seen on Fujifilm sensor cleaning was from a YouTuber who is named, um, I, you know, I can't pronounce his name. It's like Fiora Apropracis or something like that. Ken Wheeler, Ken, okay. I, I get it. Some of he, I, he, I, okay, I get it, I get it. But it is Ken. And there is a video, he's like made, I don't know, six or 7,000 videos or something like that. And I, I mean, I don't have a problem with Ken. I think he's great, I think he's funny. But here's the thing. It's there's no intro, there's no graphic, there's no tutorial or anything like that. It's him in a like standing in front of a sink holding a camera, and I, I don't think it's maybe it's not a Fuji. It might be a Canon. He's holding a camera with he's got a toothbrush. <laughs> he's 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 I guess he was throwing that camera away because he is literally scrubbing the sensor under the sink, putting soap on it, and he's whistling while he's doing it. You know he's going. You know, he's, I can't even whistle right now. He's whistling while he's doing it. And it, it, I just was on the floor laughing. Um, but it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, you see something like that and then you're trying to put together a video that takes a lot of time to do and you're under, you, you have to stop and you have to do your taxes. So, but it's coming, I promise, it's coming. Okay, no more IRS talk. I'm sick of talking about the IRS. Um, I mean, I see the comments about the IRS. I mean, look, no, obviously nobody wants to pay taxes. I get that. Just like, I don't know, nobody wants to run out of SD card space. It's, it's, it's going to happen. Um, okay, let's see here. Oh, this is an important one. Thank you, Natalie. Natalie says that at the summit, they mentioned the two AF. Okay. And I think I remember that as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I remember that as well. So, but the problem is when, what date, you know, is it a month? Is it a week? Is it a year? You know, so. <laughs> okay, I want to finish my thought and then I want to get to some of your comments. I have noticed, and I need you to think about this as well. Hold on, got to go to zoom up in serious mode. I've noticed and I need you to be thinking about this as well, either for your own experience or for if you know a photographer that is also maybe has had this happen, right? But what I've noticed is that I will go on a photo shoot and I've gone now on three of them since, I guess, in the last couple of weeks. One was a model shoot, one was a desert shoot, one was the Vegas thing. And when I got back, I, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say this. All three shoots, I have not even taken the raw files off the SD card. Let that sink in, okay? The SD cards were taken out of the camera and they were put in, a, I have a white box that says inbox on, I put them in there. They're still there. I didn't load them into Lightroom, Capture One, I didn't, you know, call them, go through them. I wasn't curious. I didn't, you know, have to, you know, rush and get them on Instagram. I, di I didn't do any of that. Um, and that is not like me at all. And what I, I started thinking about that and I think what I came up with, and I don't know if you're going through this or not, but I'm going through this weird time right now. And I think it's just temporary where the photos aren't, as important to me as actually the experience in taking them, right? I mean, obviously I've got an SD card in here and I wouldn't go out without one, right? And I know that they're being stored to it and I know that they're in raw format. So I'm not so worried about, you know, clarity and all of those other settings. I know that I'm going to do that later, but I'm not really, when I get, I, it's not for the photos as much lately. It's not for, you know, having to check and see, did I get my framing right? How did, because I, I, mean, I, I see that when I take them, 
So like, you know how you just know it? I mean, you just, there's this feeling and you can't describe it and you can't write about it and that someone would fully get it. They have to experience it them, themselves, but it's, you just know, and it's not a matter of looking through the viewfinder and you know it or having a familiarity with a camera. It's just, you know, when you've nailed the shot, you just, you know it. And then with those kinds of shots, I always see them on the LCD screen. I'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. And I'll go back and I'll look at it. Oh, and, I, and I get this rush, right? I get this rush and I look at it and then that's it. <laughs> And I look for the next thing to take a picture of. So by the time I get back, right, I've gone through two TSA security lines. I've been wedged in coach, you know, between a man explainer sitter this way and like a screaming baby here, right? And and by the time I get back and I'm just tired. And so it's a matter of, yeah, whatever, take it out, put it in the inbox and I'm done. And then instead of going back and loading it up and, and, and really going through them, unless they're client photos, that's, I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about personal stuff. So instead of going through them, I'm, I start getting excited about planning the next shoot. So is that weird? Is that wrong? Is that crazy? Have you ever had that happen? I'm curious. I'm curious. This is not something I can figure out on my own. So I thought that I would bring it up to you. Maybe you know more than I've forgotten about this. So. Would love to know your thoughts on this. Um, you know, it, it yeah, it, it's like, what's more important to you? I mean, yeah, the photos are forever and they are the proof and they are the thing that you can look at and refer back to and go, yeah, I created that work of art. I did that. That's something that I did, right? But right now, and this could go away in a month, okay? But right now in this time and in this place, for me, I just, I haven't gotten around to it yet. I will admit part of it is just running this channel and I haven't gotten around to doing my taxes either. So that could be it, right? <laughs> but I'm gonna have to do something because I don't have any more SD cards. They're all in the inbox. You know, when you get to that point too, and I'm not gonna just, you know, race them by accident. So I thought I would share that with you um, before I forget. We are going to do another live stream in two weeks. That is going to be a thing around this channel, I've decided. And I've really, I got to tell you, this is show number five. And I think it's starting to gain ground for me that it's something that I want to make a permanent thing. I, I wasn't sure for a while. Um, because I just, I love, I love hanging out with you too much, you know. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You know what though? And and I agree. I think I've seen a lot of comments about this because I, I mentioned it. I think I mentioned it on backstage. I don't even remember at this point, but you know, Natalie brings up a good point. You know, I think maybe you're more relaxed when you do that for sure. Thank you, Natalie. That's a, that's a good point. That's a good point there. Um, yeah. So we are now at the point of the show that we're going to answer questions, hang out a little bit. If there's something you want me to live demo and watch me screw up, this is the time to do it. Um, remember, I don't have every <laughs> Fujifilm camera. I just have to say this because I get some people who get annoyed that I, I don't cover every camera. First of all, listen, Fuji, you want to send me every camera. I'll be happy. To, you know, I would love to make a video on, say, the XS20 and how to set it up for video properly. I don't have the XS20. I, I can't buy all these cameras, right? I just, I don't have the budget for it right now. If this channel were to blow up and, you know, be like Mr. Beast or whatever, sure. So that's why I, I kind of work with what I have, but that's the reason. It's it's not that I'm ignoring your cameras. Uh, okay, yes. And Mr. Jarble has a point as he always does. And look at his profile picture. The uh, Is that the shutter speed dial? Yeah, I think it is. Excellent. I think it's the shutter speed dial. Yeah, okay, good. So let me just check audience activity. Good, good, good. All right, we are, oh, we, we started at 50, we're now at 130, that's excellent. All right, so let's get to questions and then I've got to run, gotta go, let's see here. Do we have any questions on the X106, the firmware updates, the X-T5? Um, Dimitri has a really good idea, I agree, except that chat GPT would probably overpay. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Loki. Welcome to the crazy Fuji film family. That's what I say now. In fact, I have one of those like auto templates on my computer where I type in like, in fact, for this one, I hit the Y key three times, right? So on my laptop, if someone says to me or just comments on my channel or just emails me and they say the following, I just got an XT5 or I just decided to, to order, uh, you know, an 18 to 55, blah, 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 blah. If someone is like for the first time jumping on board into Fuji, all I have to do, saves me a little time. All I have to do is hit Y, Y, Y on my keyboard and it prints out something like, that's awesome, exclamation mark. And then like a little happy face, welcome to the Fujifilm family, right? So I, I don't know. I just think we're like a family. So I just put that in there. So congratulations, Loki. <laughs> welcome to the Fujifilm camera. I mean, to the Fujifilm family. <laughs> okay. Let's get some questions in here, folks. Uh, all right. So we got some people saying they wish I would produce videos for some other cameras. I, yeah, I mean, certainly there's a whole market for Nikon and Sony and all that, but don't you think that tutorial videos for say Sony are there, there's just too plenty of them to watch. What could I possibly add? I mean, serious, I mean, serious question. What could I add by making videos on how to use Canon and Sony that aren't already out there? And I'm not saying there aren't some great YouTube channels out for Fujifilm. There are some wonderful channels and I've talked about them before, but Fujifilm is a smaller segment. And at the time that I started up this channel, you know, there weren't as many, I mean, Sony is saturated. So that's where I've struggled. You know, how many, how much could I really contribute to that? I don't know if there's something I can contribute. Let me know. I, I'd love to consider it. Okay. X app. Oh, we got technical support going on in the comments. That's great. Yeah. Mr. Jarble says the solution is more X SD cards. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's always a good thing. Okay. Any questions on the X 106? Uh, new video came out on that and that I did. And, you know, it was one of those things. It was a 48 or 38 minute video on how to set it up for beginners, you know, and it didn't do very well. I mean, I think, I mean, it, I, I did like a rant, I think on the iPhone or something and a long time, and I got a, more views on that. So the video didn't do that good. And I think, I mean, I guess as a content creator or as someone that makes these training videos, part of me wants to say the reason it didn't do good is because no one has the camera yet. It's on back order and they don't need to set it up yet. Or part of me wants to say, you know, maybe that video was a little long, right? And I got to tell you that, and we went through a period over, I think the past six months where a number of YouTubers were complaining about YouTube and then quitting, right? Um, recently, some photography YouTube channels are doing that. And there's always something to complain about. I agree for sure. Particularly with YouTube, they've made some really goofy decisions about things, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't know. I think if someone comments on, and, here, and here's a good point. Here's a good point. So someone said in one of my videos, and it was funny, actually, they said, you look like alfalfa, right? From the little rascals. Cause I, my, my hair, I haven't really cut it in a while. It's just, it's a whole thing. So, but they were right. I mean, there's always like this little element of truth behind it and it's okay. It's, it's, I like feedback. Feedback is so valuable to me that I don't ask for it ever. You never rarely see me ask for it. So I don't ask for it because I know it's your time and, and it's just giving me something for free that takes your time to type out and put. So I, I don't ask for it, but yeah, it's as, as photographers feedback on your photos, feedback, if you're doing a YouTube channel, all of that is, I don't think you should just complain about it and shut it off. Now I've gotten some nasty ones, you know, there's a whole spectrum. And the way that you kind of want to approach it is if you're at a restaurant or if you're, let's say you're in an airport, somebody runs up to you and they say, you know, your skin on your face looks so bad. You look like a rotting corpse. 
<laughs> right? Could you imagine that? Like in gate 34 at O'Hare Airport, somebody, they wouldn't do that, but they would <laughs> they type it in a comment box. So if you remember that, it, it helps through that. But at the same time, I don't think that with photography, with critique, you should shut it down just because it, it might sting a little bit. Because that stinging, as long as it's not a knife being stuck in, right? That's not good. But if it's like a, an acupuncture needle, right? A little bit of a, you know what? Maybe I talk too much. Okay. Maybe I, I need to stop rambling. Maybe I need to stop saying, have a look at this. You know, I'm not doing that. But, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's good feedback because I don't know how I'm doing until you tell me. So, yeah. I'm not sure why I brought that up, but what the heck. Let's see. Have you ever had... Okay, here's a question for you. Have you ever had your X-T5 freeze? Yes, but not the X-T5. I had that, and I still have that problem, with the X-T3. And yeah, the only way I'm able to fix the freeze is to open up the battery compartment and take out the battery. I don't know how to fix it, pal. I, I mean, I have no idea because that is the best fix I know, as annoying as it is. And I don't know what causes it. I've looked into this, actually. It's one of those mysteries. I, I just, you know, like the Loch Ness Monster. I, I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know. So, yes, you're not alone. Trust me on that. Um, okay, let's see here. Any other questions? I love answering these technical questions if I can. Uh, when editing, oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, Raymark, good question. When you are editing raw, I want you all to think about this question. When you're editing raw, do you use the Fujifilm Sim color profile or just the Adobe color profile? Okay, good question. All right, first of all, um, before I go any further, I do have to say that anytime you're using any profile in any post-production editing program, it is, they're all subject to interpretation. The only official profile that exists on planet Earth for Fujifilm cameras is built inside the camera. And there's a, you know, Fuji raw converter software that you could use if you want the absolute purest Fujifilm film sim exactly as they intended it to be. But if you're using, you know, Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, then you are using the vendor's way of translating the data that is in the raw file that comes, you know, straight off of the stuff that's in the sensor right there. Okay. So that's the first thing I wanted to tell you. Now, Adobe, what is it you called it? It was Adobe, hold on. The default that, I think it's Adobe Color. I actually kind of like that one. And yes, there have been times I've used just that, right? But no, I mean, when I import them, I will generally assign the camera profile raw specif... Uh, sorry, I will assign the camera profile film simulation to all of the images that I import, whether it's Capture One or whether it is Lightroom, at the time I'm importing. Because that's generally what I'm going to do most of the time. And then on a case-by-case -case basis, I may look at an image and go, yeah, you know what? Let me see what that looks like with, you know, the Adobe Color. So most of the time, I still use the Fujifilm film sims. Sometimes I do use that Adobe Color one. I, I think it's okay. It's not that bad, actually. Um, so yeah. But keep in mind, though, that even if you pick, you know, Eterna or Classic Chrome, what you are choosing is Adobe's engineer's opinion and version and way of making that appear. Same thing with Capture One, okay? They're taking that raw file and they're trying to make it look as close as possible to the purity of what the camera is doing at the time it's creating a JPEG when you shoot JPEG, okay? And they get it pretty close, I have to say, although... I truly believe Capture One gets it, moves that bar closer. But yeah, that's that's that subject. So for now, let's see here. Um, manual focus ring. I don't know, Daniel. That's a that's a question. You know what? Um, send me a message on that one. Okay, that would be Daniel. Daniel, send me a message on that one. That's a good good question. I just don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now because I got to go soon. Um, Okay, well, wow. there's a good one. Andrew asks, what RGB setting do you advise for JPEG? Okay, here's the thing. Um, 
with regard to JPEGs, JPEGs again are baked into the image pretty much. Everything's there, it comes out. You can't really do as much manipulation and you certainly don't have the latitude and the flexibility as raw. So if you're shooting JPEGs, the question you have to ask yourself over and over and over again is what is the intended audience? If it's social media, if it is sending to your clients, um, if it's pretty much online everything, I would set the camera to sRGB. However, if you wanna retain, if you're shooting raw, or if you wanna retain um, a copy with the most color space and options, right? And, or if you're going to be printing these photos, I would put it on uh, Adobe RGB. I always have mine on Adobe RGB. And then if I'm gonna be putting them up on the web or sharing them in a way that I know that either the client or where I'm sharing them to is gonna be on the screen or whatever, I, I can convert them, right? But Adobe RGB is a wider, bigger, more colored space, to put it really simply, than sRGB. sRGB is more narrow. It's a little bit less, it's less colors, right? It's smaller and it's meant for the screen, for the web. It's, it's great, there's nothing wrong with it, okay? But Adobe RGB is where you wanna go if you intend on printing first and foremost. That's my take on it. If there's anyone else that has a, a couple of other things to add to that, by all means, jump in and, and, and let them know. Um, and that can also bring in, you know, if you're in Photoshop, and this is a video I've been wanting to make for a long time, Let's say you're in Photoshop. Have this, has this ever happened to you? You're in Photoshop, you've edited a photo, right? And you go to export the photo. And it looks great. And you've even calibrated your monitor. You've been a good photographer and you've calibrated your monitor, okay? And you go to export from Photoshop and it shows you the preview of what it looks like exported. And suddenly, right, what you were working on is now super saturated and totally different looking with regard to color. Like, it's like the colors shifted, okay? That's a video, I, I mean, I can't even begin to start explaining it right now, but that's a video I wanna talk about that has to do with monitor preview, color space, working gamut, that, you know, there's a lot to that. So if you're just starting out, if primarily you're dealing with the screen and you want a minimal amount of, wait a minute, I'm exporting it and something changed, if you want a minimal amount of that, shoot it in sRGB, okay? Let me show you just where that is. Primarily because I spent all this time today hooking the ability to demo a camera menu and I wanna use it uh, at least once. So let me just quickly show you where that is. Uh, boom, all right, so, um, it, so basically you go into your menu and it is in the IQ section, okay? I think it's in the IQ section, I hope so. Color space, you see mine's in Adobe RGB, right? So um, you go in here and you just switch it to sRGB, just like that. Okay, all right, any other questions I can answer before I go? Um, no, you're not missing anything at all, but it's important, Arthur, to always calibrate your monitor. Yeah, I started writing the script you should see how many scripts I start to write and then it's like, squirrel! You know, I, I get distracted, but I, I wanna do a video on the best way, you know, the video to rule them all on how to simply, quickly, with a minimum of, of hassle, calibrate your monitor. Yep, me too. Kenneth, right there with you, pal. Right there with you. Okay, where are we at? So, I'm taking my son out to dinner tonight and I gotta run. So I've got time for maybe one or two more questions. Oh wait, oh, now, see now all the questions are, where were you people before? Now all the questions are coming in. Do I set the, wait a minute, what, the warmth? Okay, do I set the warmth of the pictures? Mm. Okay. <laughs> all right, by warmth, I assume you're meaning, um, hold on. This is a very good question actually, so I, I want to address it. Okay. Pay attention here. By warmth, I think what you mean is if you're going into IQ, you're talking about white balance, okay? So like, you know, make it a little warmer. There we go, I'm just setting it to this. Um, 
you're changing your white balance. Okay, there's a little warmth. There's a little warmth. So, your question, obviously, now I lost it. Just disappear. Okay, here it is. I want to get it back on the screen. Okay. Do I do it on edit? I do both. What I generally do with stills is if I'm just shooting in a variety of environments, I will leave the color balance on auto or I will leave it on audio ambience priority. Those two. One of those two. Um, if, and I'm shooting raw, always, 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 with JPEG most of the time. So, you know, I've got both, right? Now, most of the time the camera nails it great, and I don't need to do much of anything. Um, but if I'm shooting, say, portraits or skin tones, yeah, I mean, I'm going to need to make some modifications, particularly if, you know, I involve with one of these in the first shot, I have the, I say to them, you know, hold it near your face, right? So I use that as a reference. Um, but <laughs> if you're shooting raw, keep in mind that any setting that you make on this camera at all. So if you, let's say you're shooting only raw and you go in here and you go, all right, I want to set it, you know, a color temperature value, blah, 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 blah there. I want to do that. All right. If you do that, and you're only shooting raw, it's not like that's the color balance that's permanent of the image. All that does is just kind of make a notation in the raw file that when you bring the raw file into whatever program is translating it so that you can see what it looks like, so that then you can then work on it and save it out as a JPEG, it's just putting in a notation saying, you shot at 2800 Kelvin, right? So it's not permanent by any means. And so with RAW, I hate to say this, but it doesn't really matter a whole lot what you do with that, okay? If you're shooting JPEGs though, it matters a lot because if you get the wrong color balance, let's say, you know, <laughs> you had a real late night of, you know, drinking and hanging out, you, somebody, you know, stole your camera and they went into your Fujifilm camera and they went, <laughs> I'm going to set the color balance to underwater, right? And then you get up at six o'clock in the morning, you get out to your photo. Now you know why I break this HDMI thing all the time. So you get out with your camera, right? You, you go out and you take all these photos and they're JPEGs only. Well, when you bring those JPEGs into your color <laughs> editor, your Photoshop or, or Capture One or anything like that, yes, you can still fix them, but you cannot fix them as well as if you had shot raw because the color balance, the warmth, as you say, has already been baked in to the JPEGs, okay? So when you bring them into Photoshop or Capture One or Lightroom, you're having to work with something that's already finalized and baked in and you're kind of manipulating what's already been done, okay? So back to your question, if I can find it. Um, do you set the warrant directly in the camera? Yes, I do. If I want to have a scene that's warm for whatever reason, I will set it in the camera, even if I'm shooting only raw, for just the purpose of being able to see it uh, like that, you know, preview it, on the LCD screen because it kind of gets me more in the mood. I can look at what it looks like. So yes, the answer to that is yes. Um, did you have any other? I really wish this thing wouldn't disappear. Okay, here it is. And I also do it on edit and X-T5 photos quite cold in raw. That's interesting because I find the opposite problem. So what I would like to know just as a follow-up is what when you get those raw files into your laptop, desktop, whatever, how are you viewing them? How do you see them? I, let me know and see if I can I can expand on this a little bit. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I for some reason, okay, I, I got to be honest with you. If let's say I go out to the Great Barrier Reef, I go to Australia. And I, I sit in the middle seat in coach, in, you know, for 18 hours, breathing recirculated air, right? Eating a salt lick. And I fly out to Sydney and then I got a schlep right all the way up to, um, you know, <laughs> Port Douglas, let's say. And I finally get out in the, you know, I get there, I, I, I've lugged all my camera gear, I'm ready to go and I'm going underwater. And I've spent this the past six months, right? 
um, learning how to scuba. I mean, you know, learning the whole thing, right? I'm ready to go. I even, I spent a few bucks. I bought a, a housing to so the camera won't get wet. And I'm on the boat now and I'm just, and the boat has done whatever the boat needs to do. It's cleared all the jellyfish out of the way and I'm ready to go in the water and shoot underwater. <laughs> First of all, I'm gonna be shooting raw and JPEG. Second of all, I'm not gonna shoot using a baked in generic prefabricated underwater profile. By that point, <laughs> I will probably just set the Kelvin temperature. I'll use the Kelvin choice because I will have done a few minutes of, I will have maybe at six months prior, I will have gone to a coffee shop, sat down, spent a few minutes and gone, you know what? If you're shooting underwater, it should be at Kelvin 2896, whatever. I would have done that. I would not use a prefabricated setting unless, unless, same scenario, except you had no idea you were going to Australia, okay? And suddenly, you know, you're waiting in line to see the Barbie movie, and this helicopter flies over, and this ladder comes down with this kind of kind of ninja guy there, and he grabs you, and it flies to Port Douglas, Australia. They drop you off on the boat, right? And all you have is an XT5, and you have no prior warning. And <laughs> and the, the 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 ninja guy takes your XT5 and he puts the camera in JPEG only, and he throws it to you, and then he kicks you right off the boat and into the water, and you've only got oxygen for, I don't know, five minutes. So you're <sighs> you're doing that. I'd probably put it in underwater than trying to figure out the right Kelvin setting. But except for that scenario, just, I wouldn't use these prefab settings. I just wouldn't, because they're never gonna fully match where you are and what you need to shoot, right? They're put in there by some Fujifilm engineer to try and cover the best possible scenarios, right? And yes, there are differences when you're shooting underwater that you need to consider. And this will get you some of the way there, but again, if you're gonna get in the water with your camera, do a little work and know the right Kelvin temperature that you wanna be setting for your camera. Okay, <laughs> that was a really long way and weird way to answer that question, but I hope that was able to help. Uh, all right, any other final things? I gotta run, I got one minute left, one minute left. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Um, and I and the okay. The reason I picked Australia was because I I went to Port Douglas, and I I swam around with no problem. My wife got stung not once but twice by a jellyfish. Have you ever been stung by a jellyfish? That's really painful. That is like uh, not a box jellyfish. I think that kills you actually, but a normal jellyfish. It's bad. I mean, I saw it firsthand. I didn't experience it. They don't want to come near me, but. They went right to her and they did their thing. And it didn't just happen once, but yeah, it's a pain in the butt getting in the water with your camera, especially, so So do your homework on that one. All right, um, and by the way, I love Australia. In fact, we were just talking about the other day, my favorite beer in the whole world on planet Earth, bar none. I can't get it in the United States. I haven't had it since I've been in Australia. It's called Crown Lager and you can only get it in Sydney, Australia, all right? So yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> I've loved Australia since cocky was an egg, okay? Let that one sink in. All right, folks, I gotta run. Um, vinegar, yeah, Andrew, vinegar is the solution, but man, the pain is bad. And then you also don't know, when you're from the United States and you arrive in Australia, right? And they tell you, you know, um, welcome to Australia, mate. Have a, you know, by the way, if you're going out into the outback or you're going into the, you know, Port Douglas area with, with the Great Barrier Reef, there are 96 different types of creatures that can kill you, <laughs> which Australia has more animal life right, that can kill you, I think, than anywhere on the planet. I mean, even Sydney has that, that funnel web spider that can kill you, but go to Australia. It's one of the best, if not my favorite countries in the world. My favorite city is New York City. My favorite country is Australia. All right, I'm going, I gotta go. I wish I could talk to you more, but um, I will see you in, not this Friday, but the following Friday. Hey, if you like this stream, go ahead and click on the like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for supporting the channel. 
if Fujifilm comes out with a firmware update for the other cameras, XT, even if they do just one, like X-T5, I will do a video on that. I also have some other videos planned I didn't want to discuss today that are coming as well. And as always, um, thank you. Thank you for, for making my Friday night so great. And I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you soon. Take care.